What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to hide information inside of JPEG files. And this goes beyond basic stuff like strings, numbers, or any other primitive data types. We're going to be able to hide fully executable programs inside of JPEG files without changing the image, without changing anything about the image functionality. It's still a normal photo, it's still a normal JPEG file, but it has some information in it that we can then also extract again. And in order to show you how you can do that, we're going to use this image here. So this is a basic JPEG file, an image of a woman taking a picture with a camera and all that. Uh, you can see the extension here is .jpeg. Literally every JPEG file that is a normal J JPEG file will work for this. So you don't have to pick a special one. Um, and we're going to look at the bytes of the JPEG file in order to see why we can do that and how we can do that. Now, in order to look at the bytes, we're not going to use Python. We're going to use a hex editor. This is HXD. This is the editor that I'm going to use. You can use basically any hex editor in order to see that. You actually don't even need to use a hex editor. This is just for showing you how it works or why it works. And with this hex editor, we're now going to open the image, the JPEG file. And, you know, you're not going to see necessarily anything special here. But one thing that you will notice if you pay attention and if you open up multiple JPEG files is that they all start with the sequence FFD8FF and they all end with the sequence FFD9. And this is the important part here because any program that processes JPEG files, be it for editing, be it for showing them, be it for just displaying them, whatever they do with it, they stop processing once they reach FFD9 because this basically means the JPEG file is now coming to an end. Doesn't matter what comes after that here. So when you reach that, you know, let's call it flag, when you reach that, we're done. Stop doing anything. This is the end of the JPEG file. So if you put it somewhere in here, you will never find any FFD9 inside of the JPEG file here unless it's already been manipulated. Um, so the only time you will find FFD9 is when the JPEG file is done, when it's coming to an end. And this is what we're going to use because whatever we put here at the end of the file will stay there, will stay in the file, but the file will continue to work exactly the same way as before. And this is what we're going to use in order to inject some basic information. First, we're going to start with the basic hello world message or any other string. Then we're going to look at how we can put an image inside of an image. So we're going to use, for example, a PNG file. We're going to put that PNG file into the JPEG file at the end. And then we're going to do the same thing with the executable. And we're going to see that I can inject an executable into a JPEG file, then take it out of there, run it, and it's going to be the same as before. This is what we're going to do today. And we're going to start with the basic uh, information first. And for this, we're not going to even need a library. We're just going to need core Python. We're not going to even import a core Python module. We can just go ahead and say with open. And what we want to do is we want to write some information into the JPEG file. So we're going to open up the JPEG file. It's a little bit laggy right now. We're going to open up the JPEG file. And the mode that we're going to use is going to be appending bytes because we're dealing with bytes here. We're not writing strings. Um, and we're going to use bytes, but we're going to append because we don't want to overwrite the file. We just want to append at the end of the file. So a B is the code that we want to use. We're going to open that as F as file. And then we're going to just say F dot write and whatever we want to append to that file. Now, in this case, I'm going to go with hello world. But the important thing is that you need to add a B before you start the string because that is a byte stream. This is not just a string that we write into the JPEG file. We're writing the byte stream hello world. So the difference uh, is basically that it's converting it into actual bytes that we can write. Now, once this is done, we can run that. This is a very simple thing. This is actual, uh, actually the whole injection. But now we're going to get that information out of the JPEG with Python as well. So now if I open this, you can see here, FFD9 is the end, but here we also have now additional bytes. And here you can see what they represent. Hello world. This is the photo.jpg file right now. And if I open it, you can see the picture is the exact same picture. You don't see any pixels changed. I mean, maybe you wouldn't even see them if pixels change, but there's nothing changed about the photo itself, but we have the information hello world inside of it. And it doesn't matter how long the string or the byte stream that you inject is, you can do that and it's not going to affect the image at all. It's just going to affect the size, obviously. 
So now let's go ahead and get this information out of the image again. So how can I get this JPEG file and get the information from that image? Now, what we need to do here is we need to open the image again. So with open and then photo.jpg. But this time we're not going to open it in append bytes. We're going to open it in read bytes. SF and we're going to comment that out because we don't want to constantly append hello world every time we start the script. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're first of all going to look for the end tag. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the content of the JPEG file is f dot read. Those are the bytes of the JPEG file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look for the position where ffd9 occurs and we're going to calculate the offset based on that. So we're going to say offset equals content dot index. And we're looking the index for the index where the sequence ffd9 appears. But ffd9 is hex. So we need to convert that and we're going to say bytes dot from hex and then the string ffd9. This is going to give me the offset. And now we can go ahead and put the reader the file to uh, that position. So to offset plus two y plus two because the index of that is the starting position of that thing and ff and d9 are two bytes. So we go two bytes further. And from then on, we can start reading the message. And this is going to be whatever is left after this uh, ffd9. So we can go ahead and run this now. And you can see that I got hello world as a result. Now I'm not sure if I can inject some information here manually. Do you want to proceed? Yes. So I can also do the same thing with the hex editor, but it asks me with every press if I want to do that. So let's just add a couple of letters here. There you go. Now I can save this with the hex editor and now I can run the same thing in Python. And you're going to see that it's going to read the additional characters as well. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with images. So we're going to now take a PNG image. This is going to be the heart.png. It's a transparent background and basically just a red diamond heart. We're going to take that image and put it inside of the JPEG image, but not in a Photoshop way. So we're not going to have the image actually inside of the image. We're going to have the image data inside of the image data of the JPEG file. Nothing is going to change about the pixels. And then we're going to be able to get it out from there again and display it properly, even though it was inside of the JPEG file and it wasn't uh, displayed at all. So we're going to do that. And for this, we're going to use a pillow. So we're going to say import pill dot image. And we're going to say uh, import IO. So if you don't have pillow, you need to go to the terminal and say pip install pillow. That's it. Now, actually, you could also just go ahead, open the bytes of the PNG file and write them into the bytes of the JPEG file, this would work. But I want to show you the pillow and IO way because sometimes maybe you want to inject a file that is created in Python, not just loaded and then written, maybe you want to take a pillow image and you want to put it into a JPEG file. So we're going to do it like that as well. And for this, we're going to say image equals pill dot image dot open. We're going to open the heart dot PNG file. And we're going to say the byte array of that image is IO bytes IO, which is empty at the moment. And then we're going to say image dot save and we're going to save to that byte array with the format PNG. There you go. So now we have this byte array with all the data and all we need to do now is we need to say with open photo dot JPEG in appending bytes mode. Now, of course, what we need to do before we do anything else is we need to get rid of all the data that is already there because then it will not work if it's not there, uh, if it is there. So we're going to say that s f and then f dot write byte array dot get value like that. So we can do that. And when we run this, let's go ahead, you're going to see nothing changes. When we open up the image, it's the exact same image. Now if I open it, open it up in the hex editor, x uh, x d, we can open the image up again. Where is it? There you go. And we can look for we can look for ffd9. Not ffd bracket, but ffd9. Come on. 
can't find f59 okay i think i need to look for hex values uh there you go f59 hex values you can see that here is the first ffd9 and after that you can already see png and some data of an image file so it's quite a lot of data it's actually more data than in the original jpeg file and we can now go ahead and extract that image again from that jpeg file so we're going to delete hard.png we don't have it any longer we're going to delete it and then we're going to load it from the jpeg file as a new image so we're going to delete all of this here and we're going to say with open test.jpg reading bytes sf we're going to say again content equals f.read and then offset equals content index bytes dot from hex ffd9 there you go f seek to that position plus two bytes and then the new image is pill image open and we're going to use io bytes io f dot read like that and then we're going to just say new image dot safe new image dot png like that so we basically navigate again to the position where the new content starts, the additional content starts, and then we take from that byte stream uh, the image and save it into a new image file. Let's go ahead and do that. File not found, test.jpg. Oh, it's not called test.jpg, sorry, photo.jpg. There you go. And here we have a new image.png. When I double click it, you can see it's the exact image and you can see that the JPEG file is still the same. So nothing has changed and we have the full image from the JPEG file. All right, so last but not least, let's go ahead and do the same thing with an executable program. Let's take a simple EXIF file, put it inside of the JPEG file, display the JPEG file to see that nothing has changed, then take the executable out of the JPEG file again, run it and see that it runs in the exact same way as the original. And for this, I'm going to use the Process Explorer because that's a standalone executable file. Of course, this does not work if the file depends on additional files. This is one exa file without any other files surrounding it. So this works. And if I open the Process Explorer, you're going to see that it's a basic tool, uh, like an advanced task manager, basically. Uh, and we're going to close that now. We're going to take that and drag and drop it into the same directory as the script. And then we're going to write that executable file into the photo.jpg file. Now, first of all, of course, don't forget to always clean up. So we need to go to the top, click here, search for the first FFD9 occurrence. And then we're going to mark all the other files. So basically like that, delete them. There you go. So now we have the fresh JPEG file again, save it. We can open it up to make sure it worked. There you go, still functioning. And now we're going to take the executable file inject it into the JPEG file and then try to extract it from there again. So we're going to say with open photo.jpg in appending bytes mode SF and then open the prosexp64.exe as reading bytes SE for executable, for example. Then we're going to say f.write E dot read. That's basically it. Nothing too fancy. This is how we do that. So if I now run this, we're going to have this done. We have the whole executable file at the end of the JPEG file, as you can see. And now all we need to do in order to get that executable back, we're going to delete it here. So we don't have it any longer. We're going to delete all the code. And we're now going to say again, with open photo dot JPEG reading bytes sf and then content equals f dot read then content or actually offset equals content index bytes from hex ffd9 f dot seek offset plus two and then basically just with open new file dot write bytes se 
e dot write f dot read. There you go. So we can now run this. And you can see we have a new exif file here. Let's open up. Let's open it up in the Explorer to see how it looks. And you can see it has the logo of the process Explorer. It also has the description. And if I open it, you can see that the process Explorer will appear any second. There you go. It's the same executable file and it's part of the JPEG file, which means that if I send this JPEG file to someone and they extract this from the JPEG file, I have transported an executable program inside of a JPEG file. And of course I can open this and you can see that it's still just a normal JPEG file. There you go. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.